Welcome and good morning. You no, know, often we doubt God's love for us because we show favoritism in dealing with others and we think that's the way God will treat us. We see aspects of our own lives that we would reject. But God reaches out to us and to those we avoid because of our prejudice, including us all in His family through the love He has given us in Jesus our Savior. That same love in our lives will overcome our rejections as we learn to love as Christ has loved us. With those thoughts in mind, we raise our hearts and voices in worship. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now join in the entrance psalm for the day. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious God. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear God's word for this day, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 10. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him appear not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is found in the first letter of John in the fifth chapter. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, 
that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith to one another and to the world in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. It is time for our children's message, and I'm so glad to be here with you and glad that you're here with us. You see what I brought with me this morning? I brought a harp. Now, what do you think of when you see a harp? Most people think of love. And that's a good thing, because Jesus said in our reading today, my command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Now, today is Mother's Day. And what are some things that you're doing to show your mother that you love her? Now, some of you are buying flowers. Some of you bought a little gift for her or made a gift for her. Maybe you're doing some extra chores for her. Taking her out to eat. Maybe even cooking for her. Did you put the breakfast in bed this morning? There's all kinds of ways that we can show love to our mothers. All kinds of ways we can show love to other people as well. Now I want us to switch a little bit. Let's think about Jesus. How does he show his love to you? biggest thing he did to show his love was he died on a cross for our sins. God loved us so much that he was willing to send his only son, Jesus, to live and to die for us. You remember our Bible reading says we should love others as Jesus loved us. That's kind of hard because we can't die for someone else's sins like Jesus did for us. But we can tell them about Jesus and about how he loved us so much he died for us. Whenever you bring a friend to church or to Sunday school, when you share your Sunday school lessons or your stories of Jesus with a friend, you're showing the greatest love you can. You are helping them to learn about the greatest love in the world, the love God has. That's such a wonderful gift that we have and an opportunity to share it. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear Jesus, your love is so great and your love is so good to us. We want to share that with others. Help us to indeed love others as you have loved us, following your example. Amen. Now we continue with our worship service.
grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation for today is based on our gospel reading, John 15, verses 9 through 17. Let us pray. O Lord our God, we pray that the words of my lips, that the meditation of our hearts might be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, as we devote ourselves to you. Amen. And now in the name of our Lord and Savior, amen. Well, this being Mother's Day, I want to first wish each and every mother a most blessed Mother's Day. Mothers are indeed a wonder. For example, I wonder why it's such a compliment to tell your mother she looks like a breath of spring but not to tell her she looks like the end of a hard winter. Is that not the same thing? I wonder why it pleases a mother to say, time stands still when you look into her face, but not to tell her her face would stop a fire. Why not? I wonder about a mother who would punish a child for lying and then tell that same child, just tell them I'm not home. I wonder why, when a mother says, I'm not going to tell you again, but she does tell you again and again and again and again. Many things in this world could cause us to wonder, but one of the strangest to me is why God would love us. Some of you are probably very familiar with the movie Grease. It's a fun 50s musical about a guy and a girl who fall in love. Got a little bad feedback here a year or so ago. But at any rate, the prim and proper Sandy, played by Olivia Newton-John, gives her heart to Danny, played by John Travolta. Unfortunately, her heart is not candled with care when she finds herself being hurt by the one that she loves. Not wanting to give up, Olivia sings the song, Hopelessly Devoted to You. Now, although she had been neglected and hurt, she would not stop loving her true lover. Why? Why does Sandy keep loving Danny? Why is she hopelessly devoted to someone who keeps trampling on her feel- on her feelings? saying not-so-nice things about her when she's not around, acting like she doesn't even exist when his friends are by her side. And we see this situation happening around us every day. God is hopelessly devoted to us. He loves us without reservation, holding nothing back. Why? Why does God keep loving us? Why is he hopelessly devoted to us? to someone who keeps trampling on his feelings, uses his name in vain, gets upset when he doesn't answer our prayers the way we want them answered, acts like he doesn't exist whenever our friends are around. It does seem a curious thing. God wants us to remain in his love, but do we? Too often we find ourselves, as another song says, looking for love in all the wrong places. So what is love? Well, love is a complex word. Ask a hundred people what love means to them, you'll probably get at least 50, 70, 80 different answers, maybe even more. People say, I love my wife. I love my husband. I love my cat. I love cherry cheesecake. I love to garden. I love to paint. I love old movies. I love, well, You get the idea. You fill in the blank. Love is a very complex word. These mentioned and others, I would hope, are different types of love. And often, love can be misplaced or misdirected. People do end up looking for love in all the wrong places. They ignore pure love, seek impure love. Couples grow apart. One seeks love from an outside source. One, maybe both, start to have an affair. They meet in secret, looking for something that belongs only in a marriage of a husband and a wife. They end up divorced or 
living in a shell of something God considers sacred. Women, and I'm sure men, even though we don't often hear that term, often stay in, in abusive relationships. One spouse is possessive, won't allow the other to have outside friends, or, or one demands that the other wait on them hand and foot. Maybe one is verbally abusive or, even worse yet, physically abusive. Why won't the one being abused leave? The most common answer, because I loved him. I loved her. They're looking for love in all the wrong places. All of us. All of us need affection. From the moment of birth, we reach out for the warm embrace of our mother's arms. As children, we would climb up into dad's lap to feel a pat on the back, to, to wrestle with or to be tickled by someone who loves us. And that need doesn't disappear as we approach or re-enter adulthood. Now, we may try to deny it. We may learn to disguise it. But the need for affection knows no age. Now, some of us here today may feel the need for affection more keenly, more acutely than others. God has created all of us with a need for human affection that can only be met when other humans express affection to us. And for some of us, the need to be loved is one of our top needs. I think especially throughout this last year through the, the separation that we've had to endure. I mean, think with me for, for just a moment. If you were given only one word to describe God, what would that word be? What single word best describes his heart for people? What word best describes how God has related to you? And have you thought of your word? All right, I want you to keep that word locked in your mind. Don't change it. Now, what was your word? If you did not choose love as some form of that word, I would bet you're in the minority. There's an old song by Dion Warwick that said, what the world needs now is love sweet love. And that's the very thing that there's just too little of. You know, if we stop and think about how we describe God, God is love. Then what we really need is God, sweet God. And not only do we need the love of God, but we need to share the love of God. One of the assignments that, that some pastors require of their youth in confirmation classes is to write out their faith statement, what they as Christians believe. Now, youth are not exactly thrilled about having to write papers of any kind. And one pastor talked about how he had them write a faith statement three times. And in explaining to them what a faith statement was, he shared with them what what he had called himself a stagnant pond Christian. Now, most of you know that a stagnant pond may receive water in the form of rainfall, but the water never leaves the pond. There's no movement of, of that water. It just sits there. It just stagnates. And as you know, the water turns green, and before long, it starts to melt. Well, he explained that's how his life was. He was a stagnant pond. He was receiving the love of God, but there was no movement of the love. That love was stagnating in him. Now, you take that same pond that's full of murky, green, smelly, still water. You cut an opening into it. You allow that still water to flow out. And then that stagnant pond is changed into flowing water. And an amazing thing happens. The water flows in. It, it begins to clear up. And and it loses its smell. It starts to flow down and out and to nourish things. Well, that pastor shared with his students how God took hold of him one day and cut an opening into his hard heart. All the love he had been receiving that had stagnated started to flow out and begin nourishing him. He had been changed from a stagnant pond Christian to a flowing water Christian. Of course, stagnant pond won't clear up and lose its smell overnight, and we won't either. 
But once the waters of love begin to flow out of us, others will see the change. We can't hide it even if we wanted to. I'm sure you've all seen someone who's been out in the sun a bit too long without sunscreen or a hat. You can just look at their sunburned face all red, and you know they got way too much sun. You remember the story of when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the people couldn't bear to look at him because they saw the reflection of God's glory in his face? People can look at your sunburned face and tell you had too much sun. But are you so filled with the love of God that they look at you and know you've got the sun? (coughs) Is the love you're receiving from God flowing out of you? Does it show in your face? Can people see the love of God in our faces? All of us need a face. Jesus says in verse 12, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Jesus is telling us to share our love with one another. Don't let the love given to you by God stagnate. Let it flow out to others, nourishing them. Now, you might be thinking at this point to yourself, okay, Pastor, so how do we let this love flow out to others? Well, I'm glad you asked. See, it's very simple, and you're going to practice it right now. I want you to say, I love you. Thank you. Now say, you're special to me. Oh, now you're making me blush. Okay, now say, you're my little snickle fish. There. That wasn't so hard, was it? Well, I kind of enjoyed it. I hope you did too. And if you can do it for me, you can do it for a loved one, a friend, a brother, a sister in Christ. They won't have to look for love in all the wrong places, and they'll be receiving love from the source of all love who is hopelessly devoted to each one of us. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ. Amen. Please join me in prayer. We sing a new song, O Lord, for you have done marvelous things. Through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have brought victory over the grave. You have revealed that victory to reliable witnesses who were sent forth to spread the good news. You have given us the gift of your Holy Spirit to both Jew and Gentile. For using your power in behalf of the human race, we give you our deepest thanks. We confess, O Lord, that in spite of the glory which you have revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, we have often failed to listen to him. We have paid too much attention to the world and the voices of the world. We have not always distinguished in love between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. By not keeping all the commandments, we have failed to show love to him who first loved us. We often forget that we did not choose you, but that you chose us. We have not loved one another as you have loved us. For that, forgive us, O Lord. Send us your Holy Spirit that we may more adequately bear the fruits of your love. Help us to show this love impartially, even to those with whom we do not agree. Although the world may not understand why we love, may there be no uncertainty that we truly do love. May your love permeate the whole world that our nation and all nations may live together in peace. Grant us the ability to reflect your love in all our personal relations. And now, O Lord, we bring before your throne of mercy and grace all those whom you name in our hearts. Lord, we pray for the healing according to their needs, for those who are suffering, pray for those who are homebound, for those who are separated for whatever reason. Lord, in your mercy, we ask you to hear our prayer. May we indeed reflect your love in our home, in our church, and our state. This we ask in the name of our resurrected Lord and Savior. Amen.
all other petitions we bring before you and the prayers your son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We're so happy that you've joined us here for our online worship this morning. We invite you to join us here again next week online or to join us in person as we worship together. We gather for Sunday school and adult Bible class at 9 a.m. Our worship begins at 10.15 a.m. If you've enjoyed your time with us this morning, drop us a line and let us know. We'd appreciate hearing from you. If you have any requests, any prayer requests, or anything else we can help you with, please let us know as well. Especially, we would like for you to share this good news with someone that you care about. Invite them to worship alongside you. If this happens to be your first time to join us, we would especially like you to like us on Facebook, if that's where you found us, or to sub subscribe to our YouTube channel. Of course, you can always find more about the people at Trinity by going to our website at trinitylutheran.cc. Of course, we'd be more than happy to have you join us here in person at Trinity Lutheran Church, 1512 Louise Street at Avenue N in Rosenberg, Texas, where we continue to be a people praising God and cheering in Christ and reaching others through the Holy Spirit.